Okay, so hi everyone and good afternoon. Um, thanks for joining us today for this Selling to Europe webinar um, hosted by Currencies Direct and Linworks. Um, my name is Jessica Scarborough. I'm a marketing executive at Currencies Direct and I'll be hosting today's session. Um, today's webinar is going to be aimed at helping you identify some key opportunities for growth in the European market and also should share some best practice tips for selling overseas. Um, our two presenters who will be sharing their industry knowledge today are first of all Jenny Sho, um, e-commerce partnerships manager at Currencies Direct and then she'll be shortly followed by Sam Goodman, um, UK partnerships manager at Linworks. In terms of format, um, Sam and Jenny will each be giving a presentation lasting around 15 to 20 minutes and then we'll have a um, short question and answer section at the end. Um, so please, during the presentation, if any questions come to mind, just type them into the chat box and um, we'll collate all of those at, at the end um, and then give them to Sam and Jenny. Um, so first of all, we're going to kick off with Jenny. Um, I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Jess. Um, it's exciting that we're doing this again. I think um, especially with the recent um, exchange rate movement that the pound has been dropping, a lot of our um, UK sellers are looking abroad to sell into Europe to take advantage of this. So just to give you a bit of background, I myself head up the e-commerce partnerships at Currencies Direct, which um, helps businesses um, selling overseas on Amazon and other platforms to bring back their money at a more effective way. I've been in the company for about eight months. Before that, I used to um, um, live in China and then also Australia. So, um, so you're getting used to the winter here, but um, used to also work in banking and the payment section. So have been in the industry for a few years. Now today we're just going to go through quickly um, in terms of the agenda a few key points. Um, so we're going to touch on cross-border spending as a whole and um, also look at a few countries specifically, um, Germany and France that you may consider expanding into or um, if you are already selling on there, what are some tips that can help you grow your business further? And lastly, just um, some actions that you can take away and um, also some um, advice in regards to managing the foreign exchange site. So do feel free along to pop down any question on the site um, throughout the show and um, we'll answer at the end. So online cross-border. So in regards to the spending, there's actually quite a lot of overseas buyer demand for UK products. In fact, more than 70% of our sales are coming from Germans and also more than 60, almost 60% are coming from France. And also in regards to as a whole, there's about 35% globally of people that are actually buying from another country. And in regards to this trend, it's going to continue to grow. So from just about the six biggest countries in terms of e-commerce, and namely they are across Europe, so France, Germany, um, Italy, and then obviously looking at the US, which is very established, Australia and Canada. So these six countries alone, they're going to generate uh, cross-border spending more than 300 billion in about two years time. So that is absolutely huge. And um, we send out about 160 million of packages every year from the UK to address these demands. So that is absolutely a growing market. And that's the reason why you see retailers like John Lewis during Christmas period, they may be struggling on the sale on High Street but the online sales is absolutely booming. I will go into a few countries where you can potentially explore that growth. So Germany. Germany, the biggest economy outside of UK in terms of online shopping. And also, it is the biggest in terms of the population 
of online shoppers. So you find the penetration there in terms of e-commerce is huge. About 78% of people um, buying online every single year. And about half of the whole population are online buyers. So what does that mean in terms of numbers? So in terms of numbers, it's predicted that sales um, from German buyers is going to be approximately 60 billion worth in about one year's time. And what does that mean in terms of the minor numbers? So down to a per person, that's about 1,500 euro that they spend on average online. So in fact, um, the UK actually overtook France as Germany's biggest global trading partner. So that is very big growth there. And if you are looking to sell on Germany, what do they expect? Is it simply about just replicating your listings and your products and hoping for the best? Um, sometimes you might need to put a bit more considerations into place. So I'm going to try to pronounce my German. Deutsche Sprechen. <laughs> <laughs> so basically that means speak German. So you find that German, uh, they are very established in terms of their market. So they can afford to be nosy. So what does that mean? That means they expect to see the listing in the local language. They expect the customer service to do so as well. Otherwise, they will simply go with the German listing because straight away they have that trust when they see their own language. And this is another factor that the Germans sometimes aren't as price sensitive as UK sellers. Again, when they establish the trust and the relationship, it's all about that service. And punctuality. So the Germans, they're known to be straight to the point, straight on time. So that means in terms of delivery, that most of them expect if you are ordering goods before 1 p.m., they actually expect same day delivery. So this is very important because again, having that longer delivery period could mean that you potentially lose out on that customer. And in regards to the return policy, so this might be an interesting fact for some of you. Germany actually has one of the highest return rates in Europe at a shocking a level of 40%. Now that's obviously good for the buyers, but obviously a challenge for the sellers. So why is that? In fact, UK, the general return policy is about 14 days free return, but sometimes the buyer will have to pay for the postage to send the returns back. Now Germany, they actually have an on average 30 days free return. So that's almost double the period. And also for orders more than 40 euro, the returns are generally free. So the buyers are given many choices to just simply order 10 of the same clothes and then send back whatever they don't like. So investing in a good logistics and return company is key. And perhaps you can look at establishing local warehouses where instead of returning it all the way to the UK, it can be returned to Germany. And from there, if someone orders the same item, they can just simply dispatch out again. Or there are also companies out there where they will actually buy the returns off you at a discounted rate and they then manage to sell that off for you. And then moving on to the key products. What do the Germans want? So number one, they're very cultured into their literature and books and film, right? And Secondly, travel is a big one. So a lot of them will go online to purchase their holidays and airline tickets. But thirdly, the electronics and gadgets. So if you are selling one of these categories, that could be a country that you can potentially consider moving into. And then if we look at where to sell to in Germany. So obviously Amazon is the obvious choice. Amazon is huge in Germany. But apart from that, they've also got a few other platforms like Otto, like Zalando, which 
specialise in fashion and West Wing to name a few. And Sam from Lean Works will later on cover on Amazon and a few of these marketplaces as well. And moving on to France, the second biggest um, e-commerce market in Europe apart from the UK. So what does that look like? So France, they currently have more than 35 million active online buyers and they've spent about um, 50 billion last year and expected to grow to more than 60 billion this year. In terms of the e-commerce, we mentioned about the six biggest powerhouses and they are ranked number six. But it's interesting to know that not only do the buyers go straight onto the online retailer's side, marketplaces is a key focus there. In fact, the top 15 most visited websites, 10 of them are marketplaces. And again, that comes down to the French wanting to focus on the best bargain. And we'll go into that into a bit more details as to exactly how you can address those sellers. So again, language, language, language. The French, they expect a good language service when it comes to their own listing and services. So finding a good translation provider and customer service in that language can be crucial. This is something interesting, advertising. So you'll find that when you're selling on Amazon, Amazon tend to keep quite a generic Amazon brand throughout. So you may not have a chance to flash out your brand as much. And that's nothing wrong, it's just simply a different approach. But you find many marketplaces in France actually allow you to advertise on their home page, giving you more of a branding awareness. And one popular way is flash sales for the fashion industry. So again, um, offering a few day sale is something that proves to be very popular with the consumer and that's something you can actually do on the marketplace on the home page. And when it comes to the dispatch side of things, the French sellers um, and buyers, they need a lot of information when it comes to the buying process. So they want a lot of information in regards to shipping, regards to return, what they can do, what they can't do, and reassurance along the way. So perhaps it's about listing all that clearly and perhaps sending out email communication at the right step of the buyer journey. And then lastly, sending the goods out. So French buyers, a lot of the marketplaces actually offer the option to pick up their orders through local stores. So this is quite popular and that is something that you should consider when you're listing your delivery options as well. And again, looking at the top products sold in France, so travel is the biggest one, and clothes fashion, of course, to no surprise. There are marketplaces dedicated just for fashion in France, like La Redoute, and then of course, the electronics as well. So again, you can see some similarity in the top categories between Germany and France. So again, if you do find success in one country, it could be replicated quite easily. So I'm going to touch on briefly a few marketplaces that you can find when you're selling online in France, apart from the main one like Amazon and eBay. So Cdiscount, they actually have more visitors than Amazon in France and they have about 16 million clients. So that is equating to about 11 million visitors a year and that is due to they do very well in terms of Google search so people searching for certain categories can relate to see discount through that and also even though their website is in French at the moment they do have account managers that speak different languages so again they can speak English, um, Italian, Spanish, Chinese and so on and they capture about 20% of the French market. And then the next one, FNAC. So FNAC is known to be more focused on cultural and electronic stuff. And they've got about 750,000 visitors every day. 
And again, they've got the option to collect their orders through its store, just like C Discount. And they have been a high established brand that's opened up to the international market for about eight years now. And the third one I'm going to touch on is Price Minister, which is part of the Rakuten Group that's headquartered in Japan. So they have about 6 million clients coming through the site every month and about one third of the French online shoppers are members on the website. Very powerful statistics. And again, top categories are technology and home equipment and the culture of goods. So I guess in regards to having all this information, sometimes I find webinar you can be information overload. Obviously in a good way, but you wonder where to go from there. So I'm just going to suggest a few practical tips that you can take away. So if you are planning to sell overseas but not sure where to begin, I suggest having a look at your current data, whether it's through your current online traffic on your website or if you're already selling on Amazon or a marketplace in the UK. Have a look where your customer is coming from. Are they all from UK? Are they from a specific overseas country? Is there a particular product they really like? Have they specified any issues such as maybe the delivery time could be better and things like that? And then from there, it's just about applying common sense and look at what's the next practical country to go into. If, you know, 50% of your buyers are coming from France and you're selling fashion, which is the top three categories, then that seems to be the um, right next step to take. And once you do determine the country, search your products on the marketplaces in those country. So if you're selling, say, um, high waist jeans, uh, you could search it on Amazon France, on C Discount, on Rakuten, and have a look at the competition. Do they sell exactly the same product as you? What are their pricing like? What are their variety like? And from there, you can then think about, okay, is it practical for you to sell there? And if you do, just consider a few factors. How are you going to deal with the shipping and returns? We talked about whether you could be doing that through local warehousing or maybe through Amazon um, FBA or whether you want to do it from your local warehouse in the UK to begin with. And then we look at the localization. So language is key. How are you going to provide those translation services? Is Google Translate good enough for you or do you need something done professionally? And then of course, tax. Right, tax is always going to be an issue, but again, with the right tax partner, that should not be too hard. And then lastly, foreign exchange, which sometimes people tend to ignore. But I'm going to tell you a reason why foreign exchange is important. So the pound has dropped about a um, few percent in the last month, and that has actually tend to give people a negative connotation. They think, well, pound has dropped against euro. That's bad, right? Well, not necessarily. That means you actually get more pounds back when you are converting your euro sales proceed back to the UK. So what are some tips that I can give you to take away to manage the foreign exchange? I'll say, firstly, open a collection account, which is simply like a bank account, but provided by um, foreign exchange providers like us. And basically, what that does is, at the moment, did you know that Amazon can charge up to 4% of your gross sales just to bring your money back from France, say, into the UK? Now, if you've only got 10% profit margin and the exchange rate moves against you, you could be doing all this hard work for nothing. So we only charge 1% to 2%, so essentially reducing your foreign exchange cost up to 75%. And basically, once you sell that pair of jeans, Amazon pays directly into the collection account, and then from there, that gets paid directly into your bank account in the UK. Say it's with HSBC. And secondly, the tip is 
don't just look at the saving when you're selling in France. What about if you're sourcing products from overseas? So you could be having a supply in China, which is very common. Think about when you're paying them, how you can secure a better exchange rate there. Again, that's something that we can offer, which is usually at half the cost that is provided by banks. So you're saving on the inflow and the outflow. Now, the last point is, um, again, when it comes to, say, paying suppliers. So often you'll get the invoice today and you'll be given a term, say 60 days for you to pay that. But during that 60 days, a lot can happen in terms of foreign exchange movements. So what can you do? There is actually a method where you can minimize that risk and that's called a forward contract. And what does that mean in English? <laughs> it's similar to a fixed rate home loan. Basically, you agree on a rate today on what the market thinks the rate will be in two months' time. You lock that in. So in two months' time, if the rate moves against you, you are protected at the agreed level. But then again, no one has the crystal ball. So if the rate does actually move in your favour, unfortunately, you are still locked in at the agreed rate. But what it does give you is the certainty that at the end of two months, you know exactly how much you'll be paying. And that is really key in terms of cash flow management, especially when you're just starting out. So you know how much you'll be spending on that payment and how much money you've got left over to source more stock, to pay for the wage, and so on. So those are my three tips. And um, uh, good luck with your selling, <laughs> um, if you're already doing so, or if you haven't, um, have a look at the practical tips and good luck for the business. But if you do have any question, we'll have a Q&A session afterwards. Some of the questions have already come through. But if you do have any question that you want to ask personally, you can definitely reach me at jenny.s at currenciesdirect.com. And I'll pass back to Jess. Okay, thank you very much, Jenny. Um, loads of great advice there for sellers who are maybe um, not selling in Europe yet, or, or maybe they are, but they, they want to try a new market. Um, as uh, Jenny said, any questions will be answered at the end. And I also forgot to mention at the beginning of the webinar that all of the slides are going to be available to you afterwards. Um, we'll, we'll make sure that they're um, able for you to access. Um, I'm just going to pass things over now to Sam Goodman, who is UK Partnerships Manager at Linworks. Hi, Sam. Hi, Jess. Thank you for the intro. And uh, Jenny, well done on the slides, by the way. I've got some really interesting information there. Um, quite, quite a favourite of your Germany slide, uh, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> hello, everyone else. Um, for those, well, hello to those of you that already do know me. I've seen a few few names that I've, I've come across before. Um, and for those that don't know me, um, as Jess said, my name is Sam Goodman. I'm the UK Head of Partnerships at Linworks, otherwise known as Lin Systems. And I've been in e-commerce for about three years now. Um, started off on the sales line and uh, kept on working my way up. But um, I have had quite a lot of exposure to cross-border trade and international retail. Um, I actually helped, uh, well, I, I managed a project for the international growth program with eBay at Limworks as an eBay strategic partner, um, encouraging our sellers to move into international markets. And I also run a LinkedIn group called Cross-Border Trade and International Retail. So there's a little bit of background on me. Um, and I think if I click here, you'll get, you'll get a nice photo of me. I, I can just say now that one was just after Christmas, so I do have some slightly chubby cheeks there. Um, today, I'm, I'm going to take a little, you know, a slightly different angle to Jenny. Um, Jenny was given some really interesting information about markets, market trends, um, and how how potential buyers in other markets could react or, or not react to your listing or your approach of selling to them. I 
I'm going to continue from Jenny's next steps because I want to get you in the mind frame of are you ready for international retail? You're probably on this webinar because you're you know, already selling internationally and wanted to pick up something new or, or you're heavily considering it at the moment and um, either or, you know, both, both of those options are quite good. Um, in my experience, domestic sellers that move um, to international retail, especially those domestic sellers that are already established and, and doing quite well, um, do see a lot of success in international markets and, and not only success but profit as well because you will find that some of the European or international markets that are out there are, are not as competitive as your eBay UK or Amazon UK. But are you, are you ready? So is your product suited for international markets? I know that Jenny you know, lightly touched on this, but, um, you know, for example, if you're, you know, you're selling electronics, so, you know, Germany and France in their top three um, buying categories, electronics came up on, on, on both France and Germany there. If you're an electronics seller now and you're selling into the UK and your, you know, your plug's got the, the three, the UK standard three prong plug, you know, is that going to sell in Europe? Would a European buyer need to go and buy an adapter to, um, you know, essentially use your product in their country? So, you know, take a look at your product range, identify what you think would be, you know, what you, what you think would be good for an international market. What are your top selling lines in the UK? What are your worst selling lines in the UK? You know, having a look at this data and making data driven decisions you know, generally works out in your favor. Are there any foreign laws applicable to that product range? Um, and that's not just country specific, it's also marketplace specific. Um, so, you know, familiarize yourself with the country that you'd like to list into, take a look at your product range, and do a little bit of research on, you know, Amazon, eBay, um, you know, generally as a seller you have an idea of what your inventory is and, and you know, whether it's questionable in certain markets. And if you think it might be, just take a look and do a bit of extra research. Can you offer product support in a relevant dialect? Um, this is pre-sales and post-sales. If someone's got a question about your product, can you answer? Can you convert? Um, if someone would like to, you know, post-sale functionality, if someone would like to do a refund or, or a return, um, as a customer service representative or, or as an e-commerce seller, are you able to handle those queries? Where are you able to ship to? Where are you not able to ship to? Um, you know, take, a take a think about these things. I suppose I'm just trying to communicate that um, research and knowledge and, and identifying the market that you'd like to move into is <laughs> very, very important. So now let's take a look at you know, some opportunities that there are in Europe. Um, today I'm going to be kind of looking at eBay and Amazon, the big ones, um, the big marketplaces that everyone's accustomed to. Apologies for the image if you can't see the numbers very well. Um, I wasn't quite able to get a high res one, however. What we can see is that there's over 124 million buyers that visit eBay sites worldwide per month. And you can list directly on at least 14 of these global sites from an eBay.co.uk account. So that's your own, your own eBay account, your domestic eBay account. And there are 208 more countries that buy on eBay from an optimized version of eBay.com, otherwise known as the eBay Hub. So I believe it's you know, something along the lines of eBay.com will pick up the IP address and automatically translate the page to those 208 countries. Interesting stuff. So there's lots of opportunities. How can you exploit those opportunities? Well, what I'm going to do with eBay is I'm going to go through a couple of, of the ways that I know, and there's, there's three ways. There are many, you know, selling internationally, there's a lot of things to consider. More stock, more orders, more sales channels, translation, customer service, fulfillment, um, just to name a few. But what you could do is consider selling cross-border without translation 
just to, you know, you can use this as an exercise to test your logistics, the couriers that you're opting to use. Um, maybe you're going to look at Amazon FBA or the eBay Global Shipping Program and you'd like to get a feel for these services um, or understand the impact that it has on your margins. Consider selling cross-border without without having to translate at all. In the US alone, there are at least 53 million active eBay users per month, further 6.5 more in Australia, and a further 8 million per month more in Canada. So between all of those English-speaking um, countries, there are 55 million potential buyers per month. And if I go back here, I think it will show me that Great Britain and, and Ireland accounts for 21 million. So there's a further at least 55 million English-speaking um, buyers out there. They might not be uh, next door to the, to the UK, um, but it's an option to consider. And these marketplaces, they don't require translation. And as I mentioned, the buyers of these marketplaces do search in English. But if this isn't for you and you know you want to head straight into Europe, um, you know, how do you approach that? Well with eBay there's actually two ways. And the first one is called basic international selling. And basic international selling is practiced as offering international postage or international shipping on your domestic listings to countries that you would like to sell into. Um, what's called with basic international selling is that you don't really need to identify or you know target a specific market. You just need to find a courier that can ship you to a particular country and they will be able to see your listing. Um, basic international selling gives you that opportunity to learn about your customer base, learn about your target market um, and the vertical markets. Where are your buyers coming from? As Jenny mentioned earlier, you can actually get this information from your website as well. Um, but as an introduction to marketplace cross-border trade, basic international selling is a very good, it's a very good practice run. Why basic international selling? Why is it a good practice run as such? So you get full listing visibility for international buyers that are searching through eBay UK. You also get full visibility on eBay international sites that have UK listings selected in the advanced search results. Now, the 208 countries that see an optimized version of eBay.com will also see your listing if you offer a postage to their country. Um, and, of course, no translation costs. So, um, you know, as you can see, it's about being, I suppose, flexible, being able to offer um, shipping to you know, multiple and many countries um, you know, without that impacting your margins too much, of course. Um, but this will help you to gauge gauge the market that's out there and, and which markets are most interested in your product. But not only that, it's also a good way to test your operational structure. Um, you know, are you outsourcing to FBA? Are you outsourcing to um, a 3PL, a third-party logistics company? Or are you trying to manage the customer service support um, and logistics in-house. I would probably advise, you know, if you're new to international retail and cross-border trade, take a look at your margins and try and outsource as much of the work as possible. You know, try and build a, you know, establish yourself as a brand um, or get consistent sales in, in other European or international markets before you try and take on the extra load and the extra staff yourself. But if you are going to do that, then um, with basic international selling, it allows you to, you know, are you getting lots of returns from these countries? Um, are your items getting to the seller? It allows you to kind of test your operational infrastructure and again, understand market demand for your products. So that's basic international selling. We also have advanced international selling, which um, as, as Jenny mentioned is probably something that both the French and German prefer. Um, advanced international selling with eBay is practiced as optimizing 
and localizing your listing for the international market that you'd like to sell into. And you know, generally, this is just common sales practice anyway. Um, you know, you're you're tailoring your proposition to the end user to make it um, as likely as possible for them to purchase your your product or service. Here's some information about advanced international selling with eBay, and this is information that has been you know, given to me um, and is available on eBay. Um, so yeah, eBay data shows that customers listing directly onto international sites are seeing up to eight times more revenue per listing compared to sellers that simply offer international postage from domestic listings. What's quite cool about this is that you don't actually need to open any new eBay accounts. You can sell internationally from your UK account and your UK registered business address. If I can give you a tip, if you're doing this already or if you've got you know, exposure to advanced international selling um, with eBay, try not to offer international postage on domestic listings to the same country that you're listing directly into. And if that's too much of a mouthful, um, essentially don't basic international sell and sell using advanced international selling concurrently for the same product um, because you can get caught out, can do some damage. Um, but you know, logically, um, and also as Jenny mentioned earlier, by listing in the local language, you can increase the visibility of your listings. And you can translate your listings by, you know, you can use a, a free online translation tool. Um, you've got Bing Translator, you've got Google Translator, um, obviously machine-based. You can outsource your translation to a specialist service. So you've got guys that have, um, you know, their own repository and database of, of translations, which um, you know, humans have gone over and verified um, for, for various caveats. Um, or you can work with, you know, listing creation services that can create the listings, um, translate the listings for you, and, and manage the listings. You know, I can think of a few companies off the top of my head, um, Intercultural Elements for one, um, and third-party aggregators such as Limworks do have integrations with translation tools such as Bing Translator or uh, Lionbridge Translation. Um, so feel free to outsource, it might be cheaper than hiring your own representative. Unless that representative can speak you know, eight language, then it's probably a good, um, good acquisition. Let's take a look at Amazon. So, um, got a nice graphic for you here. With Amazon, you've got um, 10 international online marketplaces across North America, Europe, and Asia. You've got 188 million worldwide users that visit Amazon every month. And Amazon receives about 5.5 million visits per day. So a lot of traffic going through Amazon, a lot of potential buyers. With Amazon, you can register for a European Amazon account and essentially, you know, in, in, in some ways replicate domestic listings onto international international um, Amazon marketplaces, sorry, and, and they refer to this as a source marketplace being your you know, your domestic account and target marketplaces being European accounts that you would like to move into. So just to recap, with a, with a European account, Amazon can clone or effectively clone your source marketplace listings onto target marketplaces. And they can do that if there's an existing product detail page on the target marketplace, be it Amazon.de, Amazon.fr, um, but if there is an existing product page on that marketplace that uses the same unique identifiers, um, if the unique identifiers are consistent across the source and target marketplace, then you'll be able to clone that listing. As you all know, or maybe you don't, but Amazon's a very um, catalog-based marketplace that uses unique identifiers for each of the listings. The offer must be active. Um, and the product must be new and not used. So what I suppose we mean by active offer, if I can kind of bring you back down to the next sentence here, um, source marketplace listings are synchronized with target marketplace listings. So if you change the price on your source marketplace, it will update the target marketplace. If you run out of stock on your you know, domestic source marketplace, 
this will update on all associated listings on target marketplaces. So I suppose that's quite a lot of uh, manual labor taken out. If you're not using um, order management inventory control tools such as Limworks, then um, this functionality could be quite beneficial to you. Um, and also interestingly, Amazon uses the current daily exchange rate to calculate the price in the target market if the currency differs from the source market. So if the rate changes by more than 1%, Amazon will automatically update the price of the target marketplace's listing. Um, and if you do have any, you know, any questions in respect of um, exchange rates and, and currency fluctuation, then you know, just be sure to reach out to Currencies Direct and Jenny after the webinar, and I know wholeheartedly that they'll be happy to help you. So I've kind of briefly touched over um, a few of the opportunities that are available with eBay and Amazon and the methods that you can use to push your products onto respective marketplaces. Now I just kind of wanted to, you know, I started with, are you ready? Now I kind of want to give you some, some information about you know, how to be successful, I suppose. Um, Follow domestic listing best practices, clear, concise descriptions. You might not be able to read them personally if they are, you know, if they're not, trans or if, if you don't understand the language, um, but keep it simple. You know, don't, especially if you're trying to translate item specifics or, or list in another market, don't put content in there that's not relevant. Um, you know, conversion is, what about keeping it simple and user friendly? So try and be clear, try and be concise. Use high quality mobile optimized images with white backgrounds. So 50% of um, online sales, e-commerce related anyway, are done on mobile or tablets. How many of you have ever looked at your own listing on your iPhone, on your iPad, on your, on your Samsung? What do they look like? You know, would you buy from your by yourself? buy from yourself um, so, so keep that in mind when I say follow domestic listing best practices you know the chances are if you're not you know I don't mean to sound bad but if you if you're not quite cutting it in a domestic market and if there are problems with your listing in the domestic market you know that's going to follow on into international markets as well so you know if you're confident that you know, you'll buy the book and, and following all of the best practices in the domestic market, then you should know how to list into an international market, irrespective of whether it's in another language. Specify your shipping services. Clearly state shipping costs. Um, me personally, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit cautious with buying internationally. I suppose generally you can buy a lot of things in, on UK sites. Um, but you know, I've always been concerned with shipping. Am I going to pay extra because um, you're, you're shipping from further away? How long is it going to take to get here? It's probably going to take longer to arrive for international orders. Um, use track services. So, you know, with shipping, just be clear. Um, ensure that the buyer knows exactly what you're offering and what they're getting into before they make the purchase and use track services as well. Um, actually, as of right now, um, I'm, I'm waiting on some of my own online purchases and I wasn't given the track service. So it, it's quite frustrating and, and as a buyer, I would like to be able to know if my product's you know, on its way and where. Returns, um, Jenny mentioned quite a few interesting statistics in respect of the German market. With, with returns, you know, Germans, you know, apparently they like to buy, buy and, and send half of it back. Um, so how are you going to manage international returns? Do you have the customer service for that? Familiarize yourself with distance selling policies and be clear, very clear with your policies for damaged or faulty goods. Um, you know, returns management is a very big part of selling internationally, so you know, make sure you get it right. So one thing that I suppose I wanted to kind of reinforce if you're very new to international retail, and, and this is by no means a sales pitch, but if, if you're just getting started, then 
you know, speak with experts, consult with experts, use outsourced services. Um, and I'm not just talking about Limworks, but Amazon, you know, fulfillment by Amazon. They handle all of your shipping, they hold your stock, they handle your customer service. Global shipping program, um, eBay global shipping program. All you've got to do is ship your item to the UK global shipping center, and then as a seller, you don't have to worry about anything else. The customer service is going to be handled. Your detailed seller ratings are going to be safe. Um, they're going to handle any post-sale returns and refunds for you. So yes, you know, you probably it's going to be an expenditure. Um, you're going to have to pay for these services, but we're moving into international markets, and if you do it well, things escalate and exponentially grow um, right in front of your eyes. And sometimes it's good to to bring in someone that you know knows what they're doing, or or even a system that that can help you. So, you know, Limworks. If you're not using it already. Um, I could talk for a long time about Limworks functionality, but in in light of cross-border trade and international retail, Limworks can help you with managing orders from multiple channels in a you know a single centralized interface. Um, it can help you to translate your product data into international languages and then push that new product data onto multiple eBay and Amazon international marketplaces simultaneously you know once you've got the data in the system you can prepare the listings and, and you can bulk list domestically and internationally at the same time to multiple channels really really powerful functionality um, I, I was actually just talking I wasn't even reading there but so you know again Here's a tool that can help you. We do have integrations with translation services um, and you know not only marketplaces such as eBay and Amazon, but we've got you know Rakuten, Priceminster, Fnac, um, Allegro, you know, plenty of other marketplaces for you to consider and exploit. And on top of that, no additional charge as well. So definitely worth looking into. And I just kind of wanted to leave you with something to ponder um, before we go to Q&A. Have you ever bought a valuable product from an overseas market in a language that you do not understand? I can tell you that I personally haven't, but for yourself, if not, would you? Why? Or, or why not? Selling internationally is all about making the buyer trust you as if you're a domestic seller. And, and Jenny kind of covered that point with... The, uh, the Germans and the French being um, choosy. Tailor the buyer experience, be local, be transparent, and deliver on the expectations that you set. So yeah, thank you. Um, if you've got any questions, please get in touch. Um, I can see that there's been quite a few questions coming in so far, um, but here's mine and Jenny's contact details. Please feel free to follow up with us. Um, I know we're both both very busy bees, but um, you know we're, we're quite good at getting back to to those customers that are interested. And if you'd like to see a a demonstration of Limworks um, overall, in respect of your website, um, in respect of cross border trade, you can't click that button, but it looks good. <laughs> um, please get in touch. I'm more than happy to organise a demo for you. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to pass over to to Jess now. Okay, thanks, Sam. That was, a, 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 again, a really interesting presentation, um, and people are getting really engaged. We've had so many questions, um, so what we're going to do is just take one or two from um, some directed at Currencies Direct and, and some for Linworks, and, um, and uh, the rest will have to just sort of get in touch with each of you after the session um, more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so... If I just direct the first question to Jenny, um, so we had one saying, how long does it take for funds to be transferred into our bank account? So let's say that um, I make a sale on Monday, um, how long will it take 
for Currencies Direct to deposit that sale revenue into my um, bank account. Uh, thanks, Jess, and um, thanks for the questions. Um, so depending on what platform you're selling on, let's just say Amazon. So Amazon, they dispatch their payments every fortnightly. And from there, it takes about four days for Amazon to send that to whatever account you list on Amazon Seller Central. So this is the case whether you list our account or a bank account or any account. But once we have the money in our account, if you want to send that back to UK bank, it's usually the next business day. So it's very quick. Okay, um, thank you. Um, and then the second one for Jenny Unmuted. is going to be why can't um, sellers um, use a Currencies Direct account, um, the funds inside that account, to pay their suppliers directly? Um, good question. So um, we do have a lot of people asking about that, especially the money they make and the payment they have to pay to suppliers is in the same currency. So let's say that um, UK based, you are selling onto US, Amazon, you get paid in US dollars. And then you probably pay US dollars into Chinese suppliers. Now, the reason that you can't pay directly from your currencies direct into suppliers is because the tax man is going to be knocking on your door. So the reason is you're receiving money from a third party and going straight to a third party. If that does not touch your home bank account, then that could be a reason why they suspect there is anti-money laundering risk. But what we do do is, if you are in that situation, you can just simply tell your dedicated account manager. And what we'll do is, when we are converting the money in, we will still charge the normal 1% to 2%, which is half the cost compared to Amazon and banks. But on the way out, we will pretty much um, minimize that cost to pretty much zero. So you are only getting charged on the one way if the money you're receiving and sending is the same currency. Okay, thanks Jenny. Um, I'm just going to um, pop it over to um, Sam. Um, and our first question for Sam is going to be, um, Okay, so for how soon is Linworks going to introduce um, zero integration? Sam, are you there? Mm -hmm. Bear with me a second, guys. There we go. Apologies. Uh, I think there was an issue on the muting there. Um, yes, yeah, so... So brilliant question. Um, I can't actually give you an ETA for the zero integration. Um, I know that it's planned. It's going to happen in 2016. We haven't started the integration yet. So I would probably hazard a guess, probably Q2, Q3. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. We've got a couple more for you as well. Okay. Um, so we've got one come through saying, can you recommend companies that list, convert, and manage listings again? Yeah, um, I can. I, I can think of a few. Um, so you've got Web Interpret, you've got Intercultural Elements, um, I believe Pentagon Interactive also off that service. Um, to the to the asker of the question, if, if I could just ask you to drop me an email, you'll see my email address on the screen now. I'll get back to you and put you in contact with um, a few of the relevant companies for this question. Okay, thank you again. Um, and then uh, one last question um, as we're sort of getting to the end of the, the session now. Um, if we ask you quickly, Sam, if you list on ebay.co.uk and provide basic international selling, does this um, advert show on ebay.de? So if you are offering shipping and postage to, to Germany, then, then yes. Um, if you're listing on eBay directly, then I believe that you can specify this in your postage rate table. Um, but you can also specify this from 
LinLive inside of LimWorks. So the listing functionality that LimWorks has can, um, you know, you, you can specify the service that you're going to offer to Germany and how much that costs. And as mentioned in my slide, if you offer postage to a particular country, um, that market will be able to see your listing. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, we'll take one uh, final question. Um, I'll, I'll chuck the, the mic back to Jenny um, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up from there. Um, so do you have any tips for reducing um, fees on Amazon or eBay? Um, thanks, Jess. So as I mentioned earlier, um, Amazon can charge up to 4% when you're bringing your foreign proceed back um, into your home country. So what that means is by using a collection account, you can essentially reduce half of that. Also, another feature with a collection account is that, um, say if you're just using a normal bank account, say HSBC, every time you make a sale, that money gets um, converted back to your UK account automatically. But with the collection account, you can actually set up a rule on the system where you, you specify that to only transfer the money back once you reach a certain threshold. Now, the reason you do that is because there is a transfer cost involved every time you bring the money back. Now, depending on the country you're selling in, it could be around £10 per transaction. Now, that is the same if you transfer back €100 Euro or €100,000. So if you can bulk up payments, um, then bring that back, you can reduce your transfer fees as well. And also what that allows you is also if you don't need the money urgently, you can say to the account manager, look, I don't need the money urgently for a month. Can you watch the market and let me know if the exchange rate gets a bit better? So that way we can actually watch it for you and that's another way you can potentially look at reducing fee. But then again, if you do want to just bring the money back straight away every time you get a sale, you can also set it up so it's done automatically. Or you can choose to be notified via SMS, which is a free function. And from there, you can uh, physically instruct us what you want to do each time. Um, so just adding to that, I think it's also important to mention that um, with a collection account, it's a segregated account. So what that means is some foreign exchange companies out there, they provide a central account for all their sellers. So that means 100 sellers are all using the same bank account. But what that does is, say if one seller has a risk, um, a problem with Amazon, and Amazon decides to shut down their account, then everyone will be left without a bank account. Um, now, what we provide is a segregated account, so only you get access to that account. That's your unique account number, which is available if you're selling in Europe, in Euro, or in US dollars if you're selling in the US, and um, obviously also in pounds if it's coming from another country and it's selling into the pound. And the benefit of that is, again, the fee with selling on Amazon and eBay sometimes is you need to open up a bank account in the, each individual country. And that can occur quite a lot of fees and time-wise. Sometimes it can take up to weeks. Now the collection account only take about as soon as two days to open once all the documents are prepared and pass the compliance check. So those are my tips on the fee saving side. Okay, thank you very much and thank you everyone who um, joined us today. Um, I hope that you uh, found the, the session really useful. As I said before, we will be um, sending out a recording to everyone so you won't, if there's anything that you feel like you might have missed or want to listen to again, you will have that opportunity. Um, and also the contact details for um, Sam and Jenny are there. So please, any further questions, don't hesitate to get in touch because we'd be really really happy to chat at length about any questions um, and again thank you very much thank you Sam and Jenny thank you cheers guys thank you everyone bye bye